question? Or is that... No, it, it's going. Oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> what I wanted to say about Poe and the Raven, um, uh, kind of have two approaches to it. One is just the poetic approach, and just to talk about what he is being aware of and playing with when he's writing the poem. And the other is the meaning. So let's just start out with um, what he is doing as a poet, with rhythm, with rhyme, and with sound. Uh, he is, the whole poem is in trochaic octameter. And the oct, you know, is like eight, an eight meter or eight foot line. That means eight stresses per line. And the trochaic is this heartbeat kind of a sound. Remember last time we talked about iambic and it was ta-da, 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 like a drum beat. This is like a heartbeat. It's like dum bum 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 like that. And he does that all the way through. Then he's also playing with rhyme. Um, it's uh, end rhymes go A, B, A, B, B, B with that little short uh, line in the stanza being that final B. And there is internal rhyme. I'll show you when we get to the, to the poem. Then about sound, we talked a little bit about alliteration and how he uses just the words themselves and how you spell them and how the words begin and the sounds of the actual syllables. Like watch what he does. I'll show you this in a bit. Like with the W's, he makes the W words make you feel weary when you read them. He takes the N words and it's like nun, 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 nun. you can almost hear this buzzing sort of napping, sleeping sound. And he does it with the S's um, that make a shh sound. And, and he's doing this all on purpose. It's just kind of amazing to watch this. He takes the N's and interrupts them with these P's like tapping, rapping, and it's just the opposite, the little sharp, you know, sticks breaking sounds to wake you up after the end. Um, okay, then we'll do the rest after that. But let me let me go to the poem itself. And if you can see this, I'm gonna just read the first three stanzas and talk about some of these things. So, once upon a midnight dreary, while I pondered weak and weary. Now there's the, there's the W's, while I ponder, weak and weary. Is it weary just a weary sounding word? Mm -hmm. You know what, that's also onomatopoeia. That's one of your words for this week. And that is when the word, you can sort of tell the meaning of the word just from what it sounds like. Buzz is one of them. You say the word buzz, you have the meaning. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the, the sound is what it means, onomatopoeia. It's, in, it's in one of the uh, words on your list for this week. Okay, so once upon a midnight dreary, while I pondered weak and weary, over many a quaint and curious, here's alliteration with the k quaint and curious, volume of forgotten lore, while I nodded nearly napping, there, there are the ends. Doesn't it make you want to go to sleep? <laughs> While I nodded, nearly napping, suddenly there came a tapping. As of someone gently rapping, rapping on my chamber door. See the sounds, the tapping and the rapping that interrupt the, the nodding and the, and the uh, nearly napping. Tis some visitor, I mutter, tapping at my chamber door. Only this and nothing more. Ah, distinctly, I remember. It was in the bleak December. Here we have the e internal rhymes. We've got one line. Um, the fourth beat is on remember, rhyming with December. And we had it up here in the first line, too, with dreary and weary. Uh, so where was I? Okay. And each separate dying ember wrought its ghost upon the floor. Eagerly I wished the morrow. Vainly I had tried to borrow. There's another internal rhyme with mm -hmm. morrow and borrow. 
From my book, Surcease of Sorrow, a third internal rhyme, sorrow for the lost Lenore, for the rare and radiant maiden whom the angels name Lenore, nameless here forevermore. And the silken sad uncertain rustling of each purple curtain. We have the internal rhyme of, of certain with curtain. And then listen to the, the sibilance, the, 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 these S's, silken sad uncertain rustling. You could just, it's just a shh, shh. Mm -hmm. The wind is coming through the window and you, you see the little rustle and you hear this gentle sound of shh. But it isn't gentle because the next line says, thrilled me, filled me with fantastic terrors never felt before. So that now to still the beating of my heart, I stood repeating, tis some visitor entreating. Here are the rhymes again, beating, repeating, entreating, entrance at my chamber door. Some late visitor entreating entrance at my chamber door. He uses repetition of entreating, repetitions of sounds. So this is just, I just want you to, to get a sense of all of the things that are going on in his head. And another really interesting thing, because of, of Poe's sensitivity to the sounds, it makes us kind of identify with his main character in Telltale Heart. When you get there, you're going to see how sound sensitive he is. He says he's not mad, but he says that his senses are just very keen, very um, sensitive, and um, it, it drives him crazy. So Poe is very aware of, of sound. Okay, you can turn that off for